Fatima Whitbread is an Olympian and advocate for foster care, whose remarkable athletic career and personal journey inspire her to champion the cause of providing safe, loving and nurturing homes for foster children in the UK. And Fatima is with us here. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm so motivated to find loving, secure homes for our children. We're so desperate, not desperate, but we need, we have a great need for our young children to be fostered there's 10,000 nationwide short of foster carers so wow if, if you're listening keep your ears open yeah well your own personal journey is quite an inspiring one really isn't it your journey to becoming Olympian champion and foster care advocate so what can you tell us about your own kind of early experiences well I was abandoned as a baby some would say left to die um, a neighbor heard a baby crying and uh, she hadn't seen anybody coming or going in a couple of days and uh, she called the police who in turn came and banged the door down and rescued the baby that that baby was myself I then spent the next six months in hospital with malnutrition and nappy rash and then during that period of time uh, Hackney Borough Council made me a ward of court which then I spent the next 14 years of my life in in children's homes and very little was known uh, to me uh, in the first five years of my life of, of, of any uh, family um, and I can remember being in a children's home uh, and being called when I was five years old and said Fatima at nine o'clock tomorrow morning your biological mum is coming to get you uh, with your social worker and you'll be taken to your new children's home where you'll meet your half brother and sister and I kind of started thinking what what are you talking about I I mean I never had anybody sat me down to tell me that I had any uh, parents Uh, there was no visits no cards so I started to worry about the situation because as a five-year-old that was a lot to process yeah and and uh, then I started to think well this is my home and these are these children are my my family Um, but nine o'clock came and um, I sat in the foyer and I can remember I had a brown paper bag um, and one of the aunties that this young girl Corrie her mum had made me a dress uh, but everything was communal she had to rescue the dress apparently <laughs> so I heard yeah and uh, um, yeah so I sat in the foyer and I could see at the glass front door opaque uh, glass uh, door um, a pinky cerisi movement came um, and uh, I waited and the matron opened the door and a very strong whiff of perfume came in and when I uh, sat there looking at a very large lady came in with black, black curly hair. And when she spoke to the house matron, I could see she had a gold tooth. And then behind her, and she never once looked at me, this lady. And then behind her stood a very mousy colored hair, with slim lady uh, smiling and chatting away and looking at me and smiling. And I thought, ah, oh, uh, that must be my mummy come to get me. And and this is the thing with kids, you know, their perception is is amazing, really, how they view things. Yeah. Um, and I, I just remember that uh, all the way down to the next children's home, not a word was spoken to me um, uh, by uh, the biological mum and I just cried all the way to the children's home and when I got there um, the house auntie said right run along in the garden she said go through the kitchen area and uh, uh, meet the children in the garden and uh, when I got to the garden they were all running around at the sea of faces and then I felt this little tug on my clothing and I looked down she's the girl looking up at me with glasses she said you you must be my half sister so as I looked down to her, I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she said, come, let's go on the climbing frame where all the other kids were. And as I was climbing up the stairs, I then felt a hand come across my chest and someone pulled me toward them. And and it was the biological mum and she's actioning by going, you look after your sister, I cut her your throat. And I, I, I was really scared because um, the, the, the kids ran to her, the, the half brother and the, and the half sister, and they started talking in the mother tongue in Turkish. Mm. And it was at that point I realized that I don't know these people. And I was very upset because I was in a, a, an environment. I didn't know anything. I uh, didn't know anybody. And I felt unsettled and I was crying. And, and it wasn't long after that. I think integration was the word that they used. They wanted to try and integrate the family, the social workers and I just didn't I just didn't feel happy about going back with her because you know what happened but then it was told to me 
oh, you know, this is a chance that you can have for a family. And I started thinking, well, maybe that is then. Maybe it's my chance to be a family, have a family. And uh, I remember when we walked down the road to get the bus, the biological mum sort of poked me in the ribs with her elbow and she was digging around in her pocket and the the half-brother and sister were talking in, in the mother tongue which I never understood a word. And she poked in my hand a half a crown. And she said, you go back. We don't want you off, she said. And I looked and I looked and I was I was staggered. Like as a young child, I was crying. I didn't know what to, to think. But whether, you know, when I got back to the children's home, I realized, you know, um, I didn't really want to go, but I was also persuaded myself that this was a chance for family life again. And when I got back to the children's home, the auntie said, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, um, she doesn't doesn't want me so she took the half crown and she said go on in the garden off you go you didn't want to go anyway she said so off you go in the garden and so here's the point I make that with children today and what, what we're trying to do is give them the stability that they need the love and the security that they crave for and you know how important that is and what a difference you can make to these young children's lives you know and with with, with national foster uh, groups you can look online and check out what it is that how you can get involved involved with fostering a child and making a difference to their lives you know and and it's so important because as I've always said that children you know uh, have a, a right to a safe and happy childhood and f- for me I mean using my platform as a lived experience and um, having uh, you know succeeded in my athletic career and being using that platform to uh, to emphasize and, and relate to to, to the uh, to the public and try and create this awareness of how important it is that we give these children a platform so they can be seen and heard so that they can actually speak and tell you what it is they want and where decisions are being made about them you know are taken quite seriously because yeah. it's so 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 important that you know they're they're going to be future generations and we need to build a legacy that we can leave for kids and their future generations beyond ours and we've got to start now we've got to you know call upon people to 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 start thinking about opening up their hearts and finding a, a place in their home where they can look after these children and and nurture them give them that stability they need and and hopefully uh you know uh, the safe the love and security uh, uh, so they can develop into adulthood and be able to stand on their feet and 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 support a family of their own one day and it's really your own experiences in foster care that ultimately led you to have your career and be the person you are today isn't it yeah i mean sport was my saviour at school um, uh, often these children when they live in uh, the residentials in care in the care systems they struggle they struggle very much you know emotionally with uh, emotional traumas and triggers and you know finding something that you can uh, focus on that you can relate to so important you know uh, for me it was sport and I was able to feel positive about myself you know self uh, worth and being able to uh, earn the respect from my peers at school and the teachers' support as well, and uh, it was through sport that I found the love of the of the Whitbread family. And uh, and fate had it that uh, you know I, I eventually at fourteen uh, had the, the you know the family that I'd always craved for, you know, family life. And that's why I say you know it's so important that we work together to try you know to build you know the platforms for these children, you know, to give them a safe and secure you know. Um, uh, experience of of a family and also moving into adulthood where they're able to stand on their own feet and support themselves and and you know obviously I mean it's it's key it's key you know we have 4.2 million as I say living in in poverty as we speak 105,000 kids that live in the care system um, that can only get worse because of the poverty levels and we're what's uh, 800,000 kids in in living off the food banks you know the families and there's uh, a shortage nationwide of 10,000 children uh you know that need foster carers 10,000 foster carers are needed you know nationwide so if you're thinking about you know if there's the possibility that you would be thinking about taking a child in 
do so. Go online and, as I say, national foster groups. And I've got a gentleman who's sitting here beside me. He, he, he will tell you all about that. His name's Chris, Stephen Christie, and he's the CEO for national foster groups. So for you, Steve, who's the ideal person to be a foster carer? That's a very difficult question, Toby, because that is so wide. I mean, we've got foster carers in their 20s. We've got foster carers in their 80s. We've got foster carers that are single, uh, that are married, that are older, where the children have left home or people that foster alongside uh, uh, having birth children. And they all make wonderful foster carers. You know, I, I think it's very, one of the re- real challenges is that there's lots of misconceptions that, as to why people might not be able to be a foster carer. And yeah. actually most of them are untrue. So the phrase we use is if you've got the space in your home and you've got the love in your heart, then you could foster. And I, and I think beyond that, I think we just ask people to reach out and have a conversation with us at, at the National Fostering Group. And and we've got agencies that cover right across the UK. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we would we would love to speak to anyone who thinks they might be able to do it. It's a, it's a great way to earn a living. Um, and uh, at the same time, you can totally change a child's life. And, and who knows, you know, you could end up fostering uh, a child who ends up being, you know, the, the next Fatima Whitbread who wins, oh, yes. you know, world championships and, uh, and has the whole country celebrating a success. What specific goals or initiatives do the National Fostering Group's recruitment campaign have? I mean, really, it's just about finding foster carers all over the country, you know, and there's lots of different types of fostering as well. You know, we have we have uh, short break carers, we have long term foster carers, we have foster carers that look after, uh, that do what we call parent and child fostering, where they're supporting an assessment to uh, assess the parenting capacity of a of a of a of a, a mum. Um, and uh, we have we have foster carers that look after children with disabilities. We have foster carers that that uh, take children who are in preparation for adoption. So so fostering is a very uh, uh, sort of there's a lot of scope to fostering. There's lots that you can do. And uh, so so we just ask people to reach out. You know, I promise you, I spend all my time uh, traveling around and meeting foster carers and speaking to foster carers. And 99% of them say to me, it's the best thing I've ever done. Wow. Uh, they really do, because it's so rewarding. And, and you know, you take a child who might turn up on your doorstep with a with a bin liner full of tatty clothes and a, and, a, and, a, and maybe a, a, a teddy bear. And, and you you give that child the, the love and nurturing that we all take for granted and that every child needs and every child deserves. Fatima, what advice would you have for young people and children who are maybe in a similar situation that you were in, who are maybe facing adversity or uncertainty? Well, I would say find a strength within you. I mean, we all have that and that they're very resilient and don't give up hope because hope is is so important to, to a child for everybody because it, it just allows you to dream and, and, and fulfil your dreams, you know, in terms of there's nothing you can't achieve if you put your mind to it and I'm sure that you know uh, as far as uh, I was concerned you know I was very fortunate uh, to be one of the lucky ones um, but I'm still in the care systems I've come back and in a full circle to do this is my ministry to to do what I can for these young people so don't lose hope there's always there's a lot of people like myself out there a lot of good people like Stephen here that are fighting for the the right cause for to give you a chance of a a loving secure home and a bright future so yeah be strong find a strength within yourself you know and be and be loving 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 kind to yourself I'm I'm gonna do my best uh, as I said you know and through Fatima's UK campaign as well you know to bring the care system sector together to give that platform of one voice so it can amplify the voice of the children but also so, you know, it will try to to change uh, and Im- implement um, some changes that make a difference to these children's lives. It's so important. And because you've been there yourself, did you feel it was natural or maybe almost like it was your duty to come and support this campaign? 
No, I don't think it's a duty. It's a it's a passion of mine. Uh, I've lived that life. I understand it. And whenever I've, I've, I've traveled the depth and breadth of the country and I, I talk to kids in the care system, foster carers, I talk to, to, to government departments, social uh, of the care uh, uh, systems. And, um, you know, I've even uh, shadowed uh, social workers too. It's, it's quite a multifaceted job when done right. Um, I've learned a huge amount of what the differences are from when I was in the child uh, care in the 60s to what it is now. Um, but I'm using what I call my uh, power to bear and in helping bring change for these young people. And, and it's because it's very close to my heart that I choose to do this. Well, where are we able to go to find out more information if people are interested in getting involved and supporting or even becoming a foster parent? Yeah, just Google National Fostering Group or uh, go to nfa.co.uk. There's loads of information on there. I think I just encourage everyone to have a look just click inquire now and fill their details out and we can get somebody to come around and see you in your home you can come and see us we can put you in touch with foster carers uh, there's loads of online resources we can give give uh, give to you so to help you understand it better and and uh, yeah if you really think there's any chance at all that fostering might be something you could do then uh, I would absolutely uh, encourage anybody listening to get in touch brilliant well many thanks to both of you for talking to us today I'd just like to say one more thing if I may I would like to celebrate the children for the resilience they show and the strength they show but also most importantly I want to thank Stephen uh, uh, for uh, the wonderful work that he and his team do in looking after these children's future uh, thank you very much, Stephen. No, it's a pleasure. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, great to be able to to, to help and support uh, support these children. They are so special and just need our help. Brilliant. Well, many thanks to both of you for coming on, and thanks for being so open. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Toby. Thanks thank for you. having us.